occurs. And it's good stuff to think about throughout our whole <coughs> course as we do things. Or as you notice things, if you're, if you're into whether it's politics or anything else, and you see the polling going on, and you know, I think next week they'll be in Iowa, and you go, gosh, they got that wrong. What happened? I mean, you really can go back. You probably spot some of these biases that occur. <coughs> All right. So that's bias and sampling. Well, now we're going to move into 2.1. All right. This is organizing qualitative data. Organizing qualitative data. 2.2 is going to be organizing quantitative data. So do you want a major difference between qualitative data and quantitative data? Is it the same as like qualitative and quantitative variable? Kind of like that? Brilliant. That's it. I'll give you that. That's excellent. All right. That was really good. I'll give you an example. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of shoes, right? If I do shoes colors, isn't that qualitative? Yeah. White, red, black, green, blues, colors of shoes, that's qualitative. But what if I do shoe sizes? Quantitative. Ah, that's quantitative. All right, does that make sense? See the difference? So when you're thinking about this, you know, you have data that's, you know, we have qualitative data and we have quantitative data. All right, so I'm going to start with making something. a bar graph. And when this is in 2.1, um, <coughs> you've seen bar graphs. I know, for years. I mean, you can go way back. You've seen bar graphs before. they got these rectangular bars, stuff. Well, bar graphs are used to describe quality of this. So if I need colors of shoes, Over here, we can list this as the frequency. The frequency. That's a count. That's a count. And then here I can put, I can label this as color of shoes. And uh, let's say I've got brown shoes, black shoes, white shoes. I'm looking around. What color are those? I'm color of the fish. Correct. Gray shoes. And we go in here and we, we go around, we can do this for the classroom. Hey, raise your hand if you got brown shoes. And I have to count them up. I've got one and two and three <coughs> and four and five, six, seven. I see seven people with brown shoes. So what do I do? I count up seven tick marks this way. <coughs> little tick marks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Brown shoes, seven. If you want to put the seven above here, you can. I like to do that. Then you don't have to look all the way over here to the left, right? You can label it right above this. <laughs> Haven't you done this for years? I don't know. You know, I mean, I've done this before. Brown shoes. How many have we got black shoes? All right, there's a lot. One. Two, I do two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's eleven. When I make this rectangle, I'm doing this with freehand here with the chalk, but I should make it the width of the rectangle <coughs> appropriate in terms of being similar to the width of that rectangle right there. You know, because if I made it much wider. You might go, hey, there's bias in your bar graph, right? But we use software for this. Oh, software. so they don't touch each other? They That's right. I love it. So it's the first thing indicated. He goes, they do not touch each other. They have spaces between them in bar graphs. So bar graphs, when it's, you're describing the qualitative data, organizing qualitative, there's gaps between these. But we'll keep that width the same. Hey, white shoes. One, two, just two. All right. About the same width. And yeah. 
two, two. I like to put the numbers on top here. If you use Microsoft Excel, it has that option. You can use that option. And this is real easy to do with Microsoft Excel. <coughs> I really want to do this stuff. Uh, how about gray shoes? I know we got at least one. One, two. I guess I could title the other one other. <laughs> Anybody have anything else? Other type of shoes? We got one, two, three. Anyone have this? Parker? Awesome. We label it. This is frequency. I mean, the word frequency, that's like how many? How many do you have? <coughs> What's the count? Think of it as a count. Do you have like a set of instructions on how to make different graphs in Excel? Uh, I can provide this for you okay. if you want to. Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to do it. And when you do it, you're going to find it. It's, uh, I find Excel very user friendly. So when you're doing it, you're like a couple clicks, you put, even though it's quantitative, put the numbers in there, you look at, you're like, oh, if you're running, we're going to do a histogram in a second. Click on the histogram, <coughs> I do the options. So I'll be glad to provide it for you. Correct. Very good. We always put frequency over here like this is the y-axis. That's right. So when you do, I love that, Tia. So when you do a quantitative, you're like, this is going to say frequency. This will say frequency, and it's going to be a count. And we're going to we're going to actually organize quantitative data in a second. So you said color was. Um, Qualitative, right? That's right. But if you organize it by its size, it would be quantitative, right? That's right. And we actually, when it's quantitative, Mia, so you go, what do we do? We don't call it a bar graph. There's going to be another name. It's going to be in 2.2, and we'll get there. It's called a, you probably heard of this, hist something. Histogram? She knows. It's called a histogram. But So my question was, why can't, why can't, if you're counting like there's four size tens, why can't you do it like this? I got gotcha. you. Like, because... You know, anybody size 10s, you might say size 11s or 11.5s. When it's quantitative, sometimes the, these quantities, they can run it, they can be num numerical values like, um, I know shoe size is like 10.5, 11, but think of things that could be like up to 10.99999 or 10.97 or 10.62. I'm thinking of something like, like rate of return on some, like, uh, some investment. You're like, oh, it was a 6.72% re return of investment. And he comes into so many different options. You and I would be going crazy going 6.72, 6.73, 6.4. But I got you if you like, if it's just shoe sizes, 10.5, 10, you know, you could make something like this that would, people would be able to read it and understand what you're talking about. But still it would be, when it comes to those values, <coughs> it's really quantitative. Okay. So Mia, good, good question. All right, hey, has anybody ever made a pie chart? I won't make you make a pie chart. A pie chart's got the circle, it's got the little things, you know, you don't have to come in here and bring your little protractors and your compasses and stuff. That's where we use software, but what does it do? It puts it all in a circle and breaks it into these different sectors and stuff. But uh, that's also organizing qualitative data, those pie charts. And I know you've seen those before. What we're now going to do, and we're going to go into, before we do 2.2, uh, I'm going to provide a frequency distribution for you. You've seen those before. A frequency distribution. I'll take one from the book. <coughs> this is on page 75. <laughs> I'm going to take number 14. We're just going to do 14F. And I'll write this down. They already give a frequency distribution. We're going to construct something else. So here's the frequency distribution given to us, provided for us in 14A. It's about wearing seat belts. So they titled this response, and they titled this frequency. It's just a table. They ask people about wearing seat belts. Well, one of the responses, I do not drive <laughs> a car. 
See, the question I asked to all these people was, do you wear a seatbelt when driving a car? Well, one of the things, hey, I don't drive a car. Another type of response is never. <coughs> Rarely. Sometimes. Most of the time. And then always. And all these numbers were private. 249 <coughs> people said, I do not drive a car. 118. 249. 345. 716. And overwhelmingly, 3,093 said always. All right. So that's a frequency distribution right there. You've seen these before, huh? Of course. You probably saw one earlier today. If you popped open the internet and you're looking at something, it's just a frequency distribution. Here are the frequencies. So the question again, how often do you wear a seatbelt when driving a car? These are the responses. Um, who conducted this? And when this was the Centers for Disease Control. All right. What we're going to do, we're going to construct what's called a relative frequency distribution. So we're going to construct a relative. So let's underline that word. Relative frequency distribution. All right. So what we're going to do, and let's just put a rotor line here. Right in here, we can fill in our relative frequency distribution. And we can title this relative frequency. So when you hear the word relative, and when I want you to think for centimeters, that's what I want you to think. And just by me putting that percentage symbol up there, I have a feeling a lot of students in this class already know what to do. Mm -hmm. But we'll explain it. He was just talking about step-by-step, -step, like a step-by-step. -step. We're going to do step-by-step -step procedure here on how to do this. We're going to find a relative frequency distribution. Hey, what do you mean by relative? I want you to think, oh, percentages. What percent of the people responded as, I don't drive a car, or I rarely wear my seatbelt, percentages. All right, so it's a two-step process here. <laughs> Someone's going to tell us. Raise your hand. Who knows step one? Watch this. Mia, what's step one? Add all the frequencies together. Add all the frequencies together. Mia, excellent. She goes, you're going to have to add all these up. We're going to add all these up. Hey, um, there's a symbol I want to introduce to you. You're going to see it a lot in this course. It's the symbol for adding things up, summation. It's the Greek symbol sigma. So I'm just going to write on the board. It's funny. Look like that. I'm writing that just to indicate. See that thing? Can you see it? I'm going to draw a big one. They call it sigma. It's a Greek letter sigma. It's capital sigma. In the Greek alphabet, they got capital lowercase letters, but it's capital sigma. It means summation. So when you see that symbol, you're thinking, I'm adding things up, huh? Hey, we were just talking about Microsoft Excel. There's a button with this in the top menu. So if I highlight a bunch of numbers in a spreadsheet, I click on that, what will it do? Add them. It'll add them up. And it'll put it in the cell right below. I love it. I use it all the time. I use it all the time. Right? So anyway, relative frequency. First step, because you're going to have to add all these. And my rule of thumb in the classroom, we'll get someone to do it for us, and then we get someone to verify it. And don't worry if you mess it up, because sometimes that happens. You put the wrong number in, you know? So... Once we know two people get the same number, we know it was done right. Anybody do it yet? What'd you get? 4,770. So 4,770, I got a hand from Tia going, that's right. So there we go. And don't worry if you're sitting there going, I didn't get that. I need you to go back and go find the number you typed it in correctly, or maybe it was reading it off the board here. So that was the first step. We had to add all these up. I mean, that was good. What's the second step? Anybody take, know? Take percentage, divide the... Frequency. I heard it. Divide. Does everyone agree? Yeah. That's the word. We're like, we're going to have to divide. We're going to have to divide each of these. Our four seven, seven. So we're going to take like the 249, 
pull out our calculator and we're going to divide 4,770, right? And we're going to hit enter. Now, aren't a bunch of numbers going to come up? Mm -hmm. We expect that. It's not going to be perfect. I'm going to get a desk mold on this. See how this looks. We'll talk about you know, how we're going to estimate this. So at some point, 249 divided by 4770, right? 0.05220125792579. And when I want to put this in a PowerPoint presentation, I get to present this to like 800 people tomorrow, let's say. I don't think I'm going to write out that entire number. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. It would look silly. So can I round it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's for a presentation. I want to do this for a presentation so I could write this as 5%, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, I can write this answer like this. And that's okay. Let's see how I wrote 0.05. But if I want to write it with that symbol, what do I have to do? Multiply by 100. I, he goes, you're going to have to take this, multiply 100, and what do you get? Five. Five? Excellent. So I'm going to put that. Go ahead. What's the standard uh, decimal place? Do you need three decimal places or two decimal places? Uh, well, see, that has two decimal places here. Well, through this course, three? how about three? All right. And so I'm going to write this as 0 0.05, if you want to put the two there. Excellent. I can write this as an integer, though, so I'm going to put this integer 5% here. Either of these are fine. Is that okay with both of these? Awesome. Now, don't do this. What's wrong with that? No, that's point Mage, zero. That's not mathematically correct, is it? That's not correct for what we're talking about. It's either 0 0.05 or 0 0.052 or 5%. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, what happens though, I'm going to put this back up. When we keep doing this, I keep rounding and estimating. And I go up two decimal places, right? Each time. 